Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What are we going to be talking about today? Well, today, I'm going to be uh, taking a look at all the remaining banners that are going to be here for Vigo NA in 2024. The ones we know for sure, and the ones that I we know are coming, but we don't know what actually is going to be in them, or if there even is going to be a banner related to them. That sounds very weird, but it'll make sense once we start going. <laughs> so that's going to be today's video. Uh, the reason I did this is because someone actually asked for it, but in general, I always do this around after summer, because that's the time I start to reassess and start to look at the future. I most recently did 300 tickets for Summer at Buki, and it's it's time for me to start saving again. There's a unit I specifically want at the beginning of January, but then this is also a good time. This is also a weird time because right now JP is going through summer, and we know three of the summer units, but they also announced that there's a, a two-part summer, so we don't know the other two. So I have to wait on the ticket thing until I know for sure that the specific girl that I would want for summer is not confirmed. I thought it was going to be a dead thing once they showed... Um, Dubai BB and it's like oh, okay so not this year not this year I don't have to worry about it and then they said actually there's gonna be more to the event and this is gonna take over a month and this is gonna be ordeal call three and I went what the f <laughs> well then so yeah looking ahead and planning is good <laughs> so let's start for August, uh, there's not much. The 26 million download campaign is going to have the last two dudes here, which are going to be... I may as well show them, just because they're going to be here by the time you watch it or not. One of them is going to be... Um, Amakasa Shiro and Ibuki Doji. Ibuki Doji being first, and then two days later, it's Amakasa Shiro, followed up by these here. These here already releasing, so we don't have to worry about them. Um, something that is also taken in mind, because I have to look up here, there's two specific NA exclusive banners that I think are coming. We just don't know what's going to be in them, but we know that they're coming just simply because they're following a pattern of always coming around this time. One of them is the Back to School campaign, which we don't know anything about the Back to School campaign, because it's typically either units that were a part of a different banner, and then added to it. Like, for example, this there was an Ilya banner around this time, the thing that they were celebrating Ilya didn't happen over for us on NA, so they compromised and they did something so that it, we would still have it, but then um, in other years they've done it differently where it's like, all right, for this year we also had Ilya, like last year was also Ilya, I believe. It was Ilya and Mysterious Heroin X Alter, just to make sure that I'm not crazy. Yep, Ilya, Miyu, them, uh, stuff like that and then the year before that was Raiko I believe Raiko Kintoki and Shikabu in here so there is going to be a banner for back to school whether it happens in near end of August sometime in September sometime in there we'll find a gap and stuff and they will put that in and then there you go uh, there's no way to predict what's gonna be in there but you can probably guess by context clues it's gonna be someone related to school and it's likely going to be, well, not one of the units that we're going to be talking about that's upcoming. So it's very likely it will be Ilya again <laughs> and Miyu. Or maybe, it can't be Lancer Raiko, because it was Lancer Raiko last time. And Lancer Raiko is going to be upcoming in a summon. So we'll see how it goes in there. I always assumed that they were going to use this MASH banner, which I know it's a ma I know it, I call it the MASH banner, because the only reason you would summon on here would be for the MASH CEs. <laughs> that it come included in it, not the MASH Servant. I know there's a difference. <laughs> one person, shout out to that one person who called me out on me calling it MASH's banner when she's not on the banner, but these CEs are all her, so it counts. Anyway, next, the only other thing that would be left for August would be Lost Belt 4, which was announced, and they're going to be starting up the rollout pretty soon. The summon campaign for here is going to be pretty major because it features Arjuna Alter, Karna, Janako, Rama, Lakshimba, Neza, and Esvataman, William Tell, and Asclapius. And you can see here the schedule that they have planned out here, right there. I won't mention every single one of them because that would take me forever. But that's the banner breakdown that they're going to do um, right there with the, the fours and the everything else. Um, there's some story lock. There's one story lock unit on here and then one limited one, which is Arjuna Alter. Um, two story locks, sorry, Asclepius. I know his name is like Asclepius. I don't say it like that. I say Asclepius just to make sure. I always have to say that because I know people are going to get on me for saying it wrong. <laughs> But anyway, Arjuna Alter, the unit himself, obviously absolutely amazing. One of the strongest I need to kill something real quick units in the game. 
And one of the best units that you could use to guarantee that a motherfucker has to die. 100%. Arjuna Alter is your man in terms of that. He's a Berserker AoE, and he's definitely one of the ones to look, uh, look out for, especially if you are someone who either is interested in going into more arts. You have, um... You have Koyanskaya, you have... Oh, you plan to get Koyanskaya, you plan to get Oberon, or you have both of them. You have Merlin, and you're interested in the Buster Crits. You saw JP gave him 310% Buster Crits, and you're like, I want to test that out, then there you go. This would be one of the units that you would definitely look forward to. So definitely a big one, and that's coming up pretty soon. Um, but he is not the only big one left for 2024. But that is at least the end of what would be August, which would be a very tiny month. Um, because it's almost over. I recorded this halfway through. <laughs> um, September, though. We know for a fact Gouda Gouda is going to come up. There might be a case of... They, they said early September, but there's always a chance for them to release it sometime in early... Uh, August and uh, August I mean uh, but you know either way September this should be the first banner of September unless they plan something else this will have Sen no Rikyo uh, Yan Yamanami Kaisuke and Mori um, Sen no Rikyo if you're someone who is uh, has Summer Scotty and is now currently looking into future quick units this is a fantastic uh, berserker quick unit to have um, and would be good for you to pick up if that's what you're interested in currently Summoning Campaign 2, which will feature a lot of units related to Gouda Gouda, which will be Demon King Nobunaga, Hijikata, Imako, Okita Soji, I didn't say Hijikata's last name, but it's Cho Toshizo, uh, Zuma no Okoni, Okita Alter, um, specifically the Alter Ego one, not the Summer version, uh, Ryoma Lancer, uh, Summer Nobu, Saito Hajime, Akita J. Soji, and Mori. With the banner breakdown of this one looking a little bit more like this, you can see here the Nobus are together. Hijikata has the two, the two Shinsen Gumi members are together. Uh, Himiko is by herself. Uh, Okita is with herself, and the other ones are all solo banners as well. And they will feature the Guda Guda um, uh, CEs for this specific event. And not much to mention out from here, all that much. I know that I really like Himiko. I know a lot of people like Demon King Nobunaga. I know some people like Hijikata. I have MP2 Hijikata and I don't like Hijikata. <laughs> but I think it's also because the one time I was going to use him, it was for the Ivan raid and then Ivan disappeared. <laughs> Never happened. Okita Soji is also very well liked. Uh, Okoni is a single target caster. I, just, I literally said I wouldn't mention all of them, but I will. But there you go. Just a quick thing, and I'll move on. But you can see here, they're Gouda Gouda characters. So if you're a fan of Gouda Gouda, this is where you'd go. But for the most part, I think, for most people, this is a pretty easy um, skip ahead. But anyway, next, I really have to be careful with what I say here. Because uh, it will end up making the video way longer than I intended to be. <laughs> it shouldn't be that long. But sometimes I end up talking just too much. Forgive me. You can please forgive me for my, for my mouth. I think this banner will likely be in September um, because this was early October, so it would make sense. It would be come out in October, uh, September, I mean, near end of September after the event that we had. But this one will be based off of Lost Belt number five, the Atlantis part of it. And then this banner will feature Super Orion, Odysseus, Achilles, Astraea, Chiron, Shiome, Hector, and Magicardio, with the breakdown kind of looking like this. These two, these two, and these two together, and there will also be a raid up craft essence for the one you got for clearing Atlantis, which is the Argonaut CE, which I don't think the CE itself, the effect is okay, but the uh, the art itself is wonderful. I absolutely love, this is like one of my favorite chapters actually, so I really like the, the art related to this one. Uh, for this banner, obviously the big one is Super Orion to look out for. In terms of Buster Crits, and I just mentioned like, hey, you want someone who can give you the Buster Crits? This man is the Buster Crits. He will 100% crit down whatever you want to kill. He has specific things in his kit, like he doesn't have the ability to gain NP, but that's because that's to keep him balanced. <laughs> because he had, if he had any form of it, I think he would be absolutely insane. But because he doesn't have that, that means that you don't have to think about that all that much. And be, it's one of those things where you're like, it'd be nice if he had it, but he's hitting for so much. Like, entire NPs sometimes don't do enough damage that a single buster uh, face card from Super Orion does. It's amazing to watch. He's one of my favorite units. He also sometimes makes the game a little bit too easy, in my opinion. So I actually don't use my Super Orion all that much, uh, unless I'm very annoyed with a boss, in which case I'll say, you know what? Bring him in. 
bring in my boy Super Orion. That's the the big takeaway here for Lost Belt number five. The rest of these, it depends on how much you actually care about the character, but most people would not be summoning for this. Next, Halloween 2022. This one should be in October because it's the Halloween event. And there are, of course, banners related to this one. In this one, you will have Huyin Zio and Huang Fie Hu, along with the limited craft essences that are going to be Halloween themed. We can see here one related to pumpkins, one related to eating candy, and one related to uh, looking at women. And I don't know much about these two units because this is the one year where I was just super hyper focused on the welfare. And I don't know actually all that much about Huan Zhu and Huang Fi Yu. If you know a little bit more about them, it'd be nice to know before I actually go take a, their look, take a look at them. But I usually don't see a lot of people talk about these units. But if you're specifically waiting for them, here's your time. It's during Halloween. Summoning Campaign 2 will also feature some one unit that was in a previous Halloween and then the rest of them I think are either related to the event or just decided to show up. I don't 100% know. Uh, Jacques de Molay, Sai, not Sai, Sei, Murasaki Shikibu, Tai Gong Wong, uh, Yang Ching, Yagyu, and I would be interested to say, do you pronounce, because someone most recently told me that the to pronounce Yan's last name, the Q I N G sound makes a Ching, so that would make that's why I said Yang Ching. So with this one without the G, would that just be Ching? Hmm, don't know. Feel free to tell me about that one. I was trying to, uh, I'm trying to get a little bit better at saying specific names that I never bothered to learn, but this one definitely made me see. So that would be the same, right? I know that Q I Q I is Chi Chi. So this must be Chin. That would make sense. Anyway, Haitian Lobo is the last one on here. With the breakdown looking a little bit like this. These two units together. These two units together. These two units together. And these two units together. For the most part, most people can be pretty safe in um, skipping this one. Even though I really do like Shikabu, Taigong Wong. I actually like all these characters as people. Taigong Wong is probably the best one of here. But he's also not limited. So it's, there's always a chance to randomly be spooked by Taigong Wong. So it's probably better not to actually go for him unless you're someone who's going for NP5 and needs and wants the medals and stuff like that. Jacques de Molay, I don't think has, I don't think, I think I asked for someone to tell me about him, but I don't remember if anyone ever responded to it. I think she ends up being just an okay unit. I know for a fact, um, I would wish that <laughs> Say would be better than she actually is. Unfortunately, still not able to loop with uh, her current abilities, but I think you need to actually wait for this buff that is not in the game yet if i remember right i think it's this buff yes valentine's 2024 that means that we don't get this unit for a while at her full at her power <laughs> so it's a little bit a weight game if you're playing na and murasaki shikabu is a very very good um aoe caster unit for arts and the of these yagyu is story locked so these can kind of be a pain in the ass to get more of if you're interested in yagyu and stuff like that but anyway that is halloween those are the banners related to halloween Next, main interlude imaginary scramble release campaign. Um, summoning campaign is obvious here. It's going to be Nemo and Van Gogh along with Frankenstein Saber and Minamata no Raiko, the Lancer version. With um, Raiko being with uh, Van Gogh and Fran being with Nemo. Nemo you would not summon on uh, for the most part because I think Nemo is just kind of okay at what he does. But Van Gogh... Van Gogh is a very good unit. This is definitely one of the units where on my list of units I would potentially summon for in my post-summer times. Van Gogh is one of them. Uh, the reason is, one, I really do like her character, and two, she has an MP that is absolutely insane that gives <laughs> increases the crit damage of existence outside of the domain allies by 100% for three turns on an AoE. It's an insanely good MP, and she has a lot of other good skills as well, but this one for sure is a very fun one to kind of mess around with and do stuff with. Um, she's the reason why <laughs> not all foreigners have existence outside of the domain. I'm almost positive they stopped giving them to foreigners as soon as they made her because they realized, actually, if we're not careful, we may accidentally make a unit that is too good with existence outside of the domain. So that's why they're a little bit more picky about um, which ones they give and stuff. Um... But yeah, Van Gogh, very good unit, very fun unit that looks as I wish I could have her, and I might end up doing summons on her, but I'm not 100% sure. I still need to do a um, 
SQ check. If you don't know, by the way, because I did this after summer, I actually have a lot of SQ after summer. Um, so I probably have some leeway, but the thing is, is that I really want the unit in New Year's to be close to MP5. And there's all that makes it so that any summons that I would have done, my window of doing them is now much smaller if you try and go for a unit at MP5. I may not also end up going for MP5 depending on what is revealed in summer. So that's also something I need to take account for. But in terms of looking for it in 2024, this is definitely one of the units where I'm like pointed at with a marker and saying, yes, a definite, yes, I may want to try go for it a little bit. Now this should be the final thing into October, but it will leak into a November and you will see why when I start talking about it. It's the singular. <coughs> <coughs> I'm fine, I'm not dying. Singularity Repair Support Campaign. This will feature nine summon campaigns for all the various old ones. That's right, everyone is here. Get in here. That's right, do you want a summon banner for Jean D'Arc and Jean Jolter over here? That also features Marie Antoinette, Lancelot, Gils de Reyes, the most recently buffed, and Gils de Reyes uh, Caster, who is story locked. That is summoning campaign one. For summoning campaign two, we have Altera, Waver, Steno, Tamamokat, Alexander, and Bodica. For the next summon banner, we have Francis Drake and Bonnie and Mary Reed, Medea Lily and David. For the next banner, we have Mordred, Jack the Ripper, Nursery Rhyme, Mortoria Pendragon, Lancer Alter, Henry Jekyll and Hyde, and Charles Babbage. For the next one, we have Queen Maeve, Kukal and Alter, Finn McCool and Thomas Edison, along with Robin Hood and Geronimo. For the sixth campaign, just Dantes alone. We literally got a surprise banner with Dantes. Guess what? We're getting another one <laughs> later on in, in the cup upcoming months. Summoning campaign seven. Ozymandias, Gawain, Tristan, Bedivere. And I've explained, I don't think I explained it before. I explained it in a video that never released, um, which is this one. But the reason I say Gawain the way that I do is because of a specific character in a Super Sentai show. His name is like Gao, and every time they said Gao, it reminds me of that. So now I'm unable to pronounce uh, Gawain without saying Gawain. <laughs> Even though I'm pretty sure that is like kind of like you got the spirit of how to say the name right. And fuck this banner. Enkidu. Quetzalcoatl, Medusa Lancer, Gorgon, Ushiwakamaru, and Jaguar Man, and unfortunately the tr the sisters of being story locked. Why did they story lock you, Quetzalcoatl? Why? Why would they? Do Why couldn't it have been in Kidu? Why couldn't they have story locked in Kidu and kept you free? <laughs> Next, summoning campaign nine. This is the epic of remnants. L remnants. Moriarty, Sherazade, Musashi, Abby, Emiya Alter, Penth, Yagyu, uh, Kato, Danzo, Cersei, Queen of Sheba. With a lot of these being story locked or limited, with Moriarty being limited, Musashi being limited, Abby being limited, Emiya Alter, Yagyu. Uh, Donzo, Queen of Sheba, they're also uh, story locked, which is like limited with extra steps. And this is also one of the very few times where Emmy Alter actually is allowed to come back. Um, they don't like mentioning Emmy Alter all that much, either if it's because his backstory or it's because of the uh, the conversations that start when you start to talk about what NA did specifically to say like, hey. This might be a little bit bad. Let's try and make it less bad. And then the answer was, I don't think, yeah, you actually made it more obvious. You really, <laughs> you actually made it a little bit more obvious with your terrible job on this. But anyway, that's going to be the last one related to this summoning campaign. There are a bunch of dudes in here who are literally just like, some of them good, some of them bad, but a lot of them are specific. If you want them, then you go for them. Like, for example, if someone is like a big Gene fan is just like, I need more Gene. Give me more gene. I was gonna say up until this point, if you were looking for going for NP8, which I would never suggest, this would probably be your time to start thinking about it. But thankfully on the JP version, they knocked it down to where we're back at even at MP6. And hopefully with the improvements that they have to plan for coins, we won't need MP6 for very much longer. <laughs> I pray every day that they actually legitimately fix metals and they do not just make it so that we're back to where we started. But anyway, that's talking too far ahead in the future. And forgive me for looking too far into the future. Who even knows how it's going to look like when we get to um, NA. Oh, man. Anyway, November. I'm going to start with this one because this one is an NA exclusive banner that happens only in November. 
So only in November we get a Thanksgiving banner. Um, we also get something related to Christmas, but there is no banner related to the advent calendar. Not that I've ever seen yet. And there's no, there's never a banner related to the advent calendar. But there is a Thanksgiving banner, and typically what's inside the Thanksgiving banner is seven units that are typically popular in some kind of circles. For example, like I said, this one had a pretty heavy focus on uh, Apocrypha units with Semiramis, Jean, Mikasa Shiro, Saber, and then you had just some general is super popular, Kiara, Kama, Abby, uh, and then some other fours that also fit the theming of the ones that they go with. So we would don't we never know what the actual banners on the Thanksgiving unit are because it's random every single time. Like if I look back to this November, completely different set of dudes. It was Benny, it was Erish, it was Nero Claudius Castor, it was First Hassan, it was BB Summer, the first original BB Summer, not the second one that JP just got. Obviously. And the year before that was Okita, Moriarty, Skahawk, Asemi, it rains. Uh, Nero Caster again. Jack the Ripper and Zong Yu. I don't know how Zong Yu got on here, but maybe it was just because maybe there is a specific fan for the Horseman. But you see what I'm saying here is that typically it is units that hopefully haven't shown up yet and are popular. If I were to take a wild stab in the dark to say what band, what unit I think would show up in this, I think it's Gilgamesh. I think Gilgamesh might show up in it, but I also think Gilgamesh might also have a separate banner featuring just himself. I'm not 100% sure though. Um, I, but yeah, something that we can't predict, but it is actually good to keep in the back of your mind at the very least. Now let's talk about what we do know, which is going to be the Fairy Knight stuff. This pre-release campaign looks on the surface that there's no banner, but actually if you scroll down, you can see here, that's right, Morgan returns at the beginning of November or likely near the end of October. Uh, a Morgan banner. That's why I didn't mention Morgan. Because it would make sense to put Morgan in Thanksgiving, but she can't be there for Thanksgiving because she's here now for the Fairy Nights <laughs> Cup. Uh, she'll be here. Morgan, obviously a very popular unit, a very good Berserker uh, AoE uh, Buster unit, and is able to exist in the same space as Arjuna Altar because she offers something different from Arjuna Altar. And what she offers differently from Arjuna Altar is also very good. So it ends up being a case of like, I remember in JP, like they stopped using Arjuna Altar for a bit for more Morgan because it was like, we don't need the power, but we like the flexibility and the team build that she has with her, which is like, fair enough. Um, even if you have her at MP1, some people would want her at more higher MPs to make her better at farming and stuff like that, just to confirm it. So you can have a full grind team of just uh, event CEs and 50% and not have to worry about having support stuff. It's a very interesting, different kind of way of playing um, that I like. Caldea Fairy Night Cup. Like, I really do like team building with Morgan. It's something that you wouldn't think about when you're using her, but the specific team building that comes around Morgan is pretty nice. Anyway, the other things related to um, banners related to the fairy uh, for the Caldea Fairy Night Cup. First campaign features Brit Omar, Bardigast, and Babu Sif over here. Once again, Bar I really wish they would do a banner, one where Bargus wasn't with Babu Sif and one where Sif wasn't with Bargus. Just because I really would like more copies of Bargus, but I have MP4 of Babo Sif over here, and I really don't want more copies. I want more Bargus. Mine's been MP2 for so long since basically she released. Anyway, the next campaign related: Charlemagne, Bradamante, Roland, and then right after him, Brynhildr, Sigurd, Kintoki, Krimhild, and Siegfried and Hercules. Another banner that features a solo Hercules, and he's even with um, Kintoki over here, which is pretty nice. Next, as we look forward again, I, we're getting to the point where there's not going to be that much banners. Um, but the reason is, is because there, we're about to get bombarded with a buttload of them. Um, the ones we are about to get, it, it gets really dangerous near the end of this year. So one related to Lost Belt 7. Who could be in it if they already showed Morgan? This one is, of course, Castoria and Da Vinci. Da Vinci, very good AoE writer. Castoria is fucking Castoria. She is amazing. If you have Castoria, it makes your life easier. 100% worth getting if you want to run arts. If you got most recently Proto Merlin, um, you could use a Castoria, <laughs> even though you don't really. You, if you want to look further into arts, the answer is you need to get the better uh, art support, which is Castoria. She's even better if you're not using her in um, art.
parts. She's even good in there as like just a generic support because she offers 50% to NP. She can give someone invincibility that can't be pierced. Like there's so many different ways I could say that Castoria is good that I just may as well save it for when I get to the video talking about Castoria again. But 100% this is one of the units where if you're like wondering, hey, what should I be saving for now as a new player? If I had a suggestion, it would 100% be Castoria. Go for Castoria, unless you hate arts, in which case you would, if you care more for Buster, then you should be going for Arjuna Altar, uh, Oberon, and Koyanskaya. If you have more care for Quick, then it would be um, Senrikyo, and it would be uh, Scotty, Summer Scotty, and regular Scotty. But regular Scotty isn't currently here, and you, and with the current system that we have, two Summer Scotties is typically enough. Um, Though it is really fun to farm with three Scotties. Anyway, point is, Castoria, very good. Keep in mind, right around here, Lost Bell 7 pre-release support campaign, and that should be the end of November. Unless this specific other one that funnels into here either starts early December or late November. It just kind of depends on how they want to do it. And this is the actual campaign related to Lost Belt 6. And this one features Muramasa, Melusane, Oberon, Percival, Red Hair... Kukalan Caster, with the breakdown looking like here, this is some amazing assortment of dudes. Obviously, um, Kukalan Caster, after his specific buff that you get in Lost Belt 6, is an insane good buster AoE that you would not expect. So if you're a new player, <laughs> please make sure not to burn him. I think I see a lot of new players end up burning their caster because they, they come from other gacha games where it's like, oh yeah, three stars are useless. Who would care about them? We do. <laughs> Don't burn him. Red hair is also, and he's also story luck, so he's a pain in the ass to get more copies from. Same thing goes for red hair. I think red hair is a fun looking unit. <laughs> Probably needs a little bit more help, but I have been able to farm with him in the past. The big thing that's a bummer is that I wish he wasn't story locked, so it'd be easier to get him to MP5. Percival is an AoE Lancer, which is alright, but the two, the three here are absolutely amazing units. Muramasa is the weakest of these two. Which you have to think about, when Muramasa came out, it felt like they printed a cheat button. These units are just that much better than him. Melusane, if you have Melusane, there's almost no reason to use another Lancer AoE. Even though her specific Lancer AoE is Buster, she's just miles ahead of every other Lancer AoE that's in the game. Plus, she also is a single target with the first one. Obviously, you can't ever... Um, and unless you're specifically already ending the fight, you can't use her third skill. If you want to keep using that first single target one, but it's something to kind of keep in mind. You can still use it, and I have in the past before. Um, Oberon is the ultimate generic support that you can fit on anything. You can use him with Buster, as long as it's not with Merlin. He hates Merlin. Don't use him with Merlin. He has a skill that literally just says, fuck you for using Merlin, so you don't ever want to use him together. Unless you like playing the odds of a 20% fail rate of your skills for no reason when you're using Merlin. Um... But a generic support, he gives 70% to NP, he gives a lot of damage, he can give crit stars, he can give MP damage up. And his third skill, if you use it correctly, is a you're dead now button. It kills the unit that you're using it with, but if the match is over, then it doesn't really matter. Or if they were already about to die, then it really doesn't matter. You're basically already launching them. Fantastic unit. Um enables a lot of other team builds as well and i think in general and if you have a black grill at max limit break you can actually farm with um uh with oberon himself <laughs> which is really funny i've done it before in the past uh oberon though there you go that is not it we have a couple more banners in december they said specifically that for lost belt 7 none of the new units in it will show up until next year so these are all rerun banners basically the pre-release support campaign too, I don't think has anything to it, but just to check, I will check. Doesn't have it, just to be sure. Christmas 2020 rerun, which will feature um, some campaign that has Vitra, Karna, Arjuna, Parvati, Martha, Beowulf. Did you hear everything I just said? None of these units really stack up to those units, unfortunately. Uh, though that doesn't mean that they're bad, except for Arjuna. Arjuna is bad. <laughs> uh, Arjuna Alter, amazing. Arjuna Regular, not good. Uh, Karna is a really good unit and Vitra can also be really good and if you were there for the raid where Vitra, using a Vitra was like key and clutch into taking down the raid, you can understand Vitra is good. But also they just don't compare to a lot of the other better units, you know. In Fago, there's a lot of units that are good and are usable and then there are units that are just better, if that makes sense. Um, 
for me to call a unit outright bad, they would have to have literally zero purpose in what they do, or the thing that they want you to do doesn't fit uh, in some kind of capacity. For example, um, Arjuna <laughs> is a good example of that. He can do that. Um, there's a couple other units. Asteno is a really bad one. But anyway, now I'm going into like the minutia of things. We need to move on. I think we already got this banner featuring Dantes and Ushiwakamaru, so I'm not going to look at it. I think we also probably already got this banner featuring uh, Nero, but just to be sure, it's Nero Bride and Nero Claudius. They might still release a banner related to this, but it will be closer to something when Extra is going to be coming out. So maybe this will be delayed till later. Uh, the Lost Belt 7 pre-release campaign part 3 I don't think features any banners, and it does not. Um, the campaign part 4 does, though. That's why I keep looking at them. This one will feature Koyanskaya, and this is probably the last big unit. Um, because during this, the unit that's on it is... Oh, wow. I was going to say, they have um, <laughs> strength things for them, but they're not actually on the, the thing. It, it has to be for chapter release or something. Oh, okay. One moment. Let me look at No, really? No. Where is it? I know that for a fact there's one other band. It's for Hokkaido. Stupid me. Featuring James Mor Moriarty Ruler and Lamba over here. And, yeah, yeah but Coin Skya is the last big unit for December. And she's the Buster support. And just like Castoria, I could spend a lot of time telling you how good she is, but you just need to know, worth looking out if you want to run Buster, and you want to run Oberon, and there you go. Worth saving for. Similar to Castoria, I would say worth saving for. I would still always lean forward for Castoria, but if you also just want, if you care more about Buster and Buster memes, then yeah, it makes sense to go over for Korean Sky then. Uh, and that is officially it. And in terms of the new year, what's coming on the new year that you need to know it is, um, first it's Rasputin, and then it's Nido Altar, and then it is Tez, and then it is Cuckoo. And that's the specific unit that I'm waiting for. But that's what New Year's is looking like. Those are all Lost Belt 7 units uh, related to it. The reason I'm not clicking on the January part is that there might be some specific things that want to be kept hidden, just in case people don't want to be spoiled on it. And they made it 32 minutes into this video. I'll look out for you. Which is very funny to not want to be spoiled on a video that looks to the future, but I don't... <laughs> people are weird sometimes, alright? Just, just accept me on this one. Um, but that's it for 2024, and that's what it's looking like for NA. A lot of good stuff, but honestly, if you're a player like me that's been playing for a while and has a lot of these units, there's actually not that much for you. It's a lot of units that I missed on their first go-around. Like, for me, it's Van Gogh. It's some units that I want more NP copies of. It's Quetz. But for the most part, I think I would prefer to keep waiting and summon on, um... The units that are coming in the next year because next year is looking like to be a very tough year i mentioned the four that are going to be related to january but that's also not including the collab that we have which is going to be the arcade one which will finally give us our first beast unit which will if you don't know this beast units can't be getting on regular uh, gssrs they have to be gotten on a way they have to be used in down destiny summon and that's it um, which makes them one of the hardest classes to get, so try not to miss them. That's also why I'm planning on summoning for saving on for the ninth anniversary, because it's a second beast in the game, and that one is going to be Space Airish, so I want to save for that one. Um, but there's also stuff, this is like two years ahead, and I'm already planning ahead on this, thinking about it. Um, holy shit, they brought back homes. Good, I didn't know that they did that. <laughs> Hmm? It happened yeah, it happened recently. I was like, oh shit, they brought back Holmes. Most recently on the NA side, we had our last Holmes banner, and we were like, when is he coming back? He's back. Good. <laughs> oh, no, I don't think Thanksgiving is too soon. I mean, they could release Holmes on Thanksgiving banner for us. But the point is, um, it's hard to save up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be 100% real with you. It's hard to save up. <laughs> this game, I had already fought pretty hard and said, you know, like, you know what? I'm gonna save up for Erish. What could they announce for Summer? What could they announce for Summer? Seal? I'm like, okay, she's cool, but I'm not the biggest fan of Tsukuhime, so something that I could probably say, like, yeah, I'll, I'll do a little summons for, but I won't go crazy. And then they said, here's another BB, and it's like, is it actually BB? Who knows? I'll find out pretty soon, <laughs> but in two years' time, I will know if that's actually legitimately BB. 
But then they also said there's even more summer banners related, so I just don't know anymore, man. I don't know anymore, but the saving never stops. But it, it's, a, it's a good thing to look forward and try and do your best, man. That's all it's all that's what it's all about, man. It's doing your best. That's the end of the video, everyone. This video's gone on for 34 minutes. I'm done. Thank you very much if you made it all the way to the end. Feel free to tell me what your saving plans are doing. If there's any banner here that's actually interesting to you. You're supposed to say this stuff at the beginning, but I'm bad at doing YouTube stuff, so I save it for the end. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. I don't know where the stop record button is. There it is.